Okay, today I'm going to talk about using videos with multiple perspectives to teach thinking. Now this is a very important uh, question, uh, important topic, uh, because we do have an educational challenge in teaching higher order thinking. What is higher order thinking? Higher order thinking is about creating um, new solutions, problem solvings. It is about analyzing what we have already known, evaluating different solutions, and also synthesizing all the different informations that uh, we, we can absorb. It is not about memorizing or regurgitating what we have memorized in, in the test. Um, what we have been so used to in, in schools and as well as in, in uh, many different uh, uh, testing type of situations, we, we tend to just memorize, get a lot of information, a lot of data, and then just regurgitate it in a, in a testing situation and then forget about it. That is not what higher order thinking is about. Higher order thinking is very important in the 21st century because in this century, it is not about lack of information. It is about how to use the information, how to, like uh, other presentations that we have seen, how to gather the information that we have and then manipulate it, find the most important, most relevant information that we can use in, sol in solving a different uh, uh, situation, different pro problem, and also finding a new solution to some problems. And so, some people say, it is very difficult, difficult to teach higher order thinking because this, uh, there's a conventional wisdom that wisdom cannot be taught. And the idea is that, well, wisdom is kind of like um, being smart, okay? You can't just tell somebody, hey, just be smarter or be wiser, be more creative or just uh, uh, think more compl uh, complexly because things like this, they, they take time to develop. And so that's, the, 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 that's why there's the, this statement, wisdom cannot be taught. And of course, you know, we are here talking about wisdom. And so the real question is, can, really, you know, can uh, wisdom be really taught? Or, or uh, will it, it can or cannot? And um, wisdom or the, the use of knowledge to solve problems, Sometimes it is kind of like the different blind men touching an elephant. Different blind men touching the elephants, the, touching the different parts, describing it differently. Some think that you know it is like a fan. Some think that it is like a wall. Some think that it is like a rope. But how the a, a elephant is really like, we need to open our eyes so that we can see. And sometimes it is not because we don't want to see, but maybe the problem is that we do not have the eyes to see, okay? Now, let me illustrate that with some of the process that we have worked on, okay? One project is um, to train teachers. We have developed a lot of different tools for training teachers. I'm in a field of education, and sometimes it is very difficult to train, train teachers because teachers, when they, students, they come in, they have a lifetime of experience of being students, but changing their role to become teachers, it can be quite different. When you take a teacher, a student teacher, into a classroom situation or let them see a video of a classroom, sometimes they cannot see what is happening. They tend to oversimplify some of the pedagogies, strategies, student behaviors, psychologies, teachers thinking that, that, that is really going on in that situation. And another situation is kind of like uh, in, in medical school uh, for, for teachers or for, for nurses. When they look at some of the techniques that uh, teachers or nurses use, they also tend to simplify some of the things that they do. When they see, you know, poking a needle, giving somebody a shot, uh, they may see that, oh, okay, well, just poke it, you know. But it is a little more complicated than, than the, just the action of poking it. Uh, there are lots of things that go on, uh, go, go on in, uh, behind the scene. If you are not careful, you are not knowledgeable of those things that, uh, that are behind you know, the technique, there may uh, 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 be a lot of chances that things can go wrong. And another situation um, is that this is actually about training general doctors. Now, you may think that, well, doctors, 
of course, they already have a lot of knowledge. They are already very uh, 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 complicated you know, experts in, in what they do. Yes, it is true. But when someone who is an export expert in one area, it doesn't mean that he's an expert in all different areas. And so for some general doctors, they may be able to treat you know, most of the symptoms in general situations, but they may need the knowledge and skills in some specialized areas. And uh, for ex in this case, for example, in psychiatry, okay, most of the doctors actually treat um, uh, uh, psychiatry at the general practitioner's level, but uh, they may not have the expertise in, in doing that. And so when they see a, a, a patient with uh, uh, some of these uh, psychiatric uh, symptoms, they may be able to treat that only at a certain level. And so what do, they, what, what do we do? So knowing that knowledge and uh, the, the use of the knowledge more, more precisely is very important. Um, what, what we need is actually a mechanism a conceptual mechanism as well as a technological mechanism that will allow us to peel the onion so that we can peel off the different layers of meanings to get deeper into that knowledge, that wisdom, so that we know how to use, use it in, in solving problems. It is also like you know, a Rus Russian nesting toys. Every toy that you, you un uncover, it, it gives you a different picture. It shows you something different, and, and it gives you a different meaning to it. And all of you have seen movies. You all of your own DVDs or Blu-rays, and, and some of you are interested in listening to the doctor, director's commentary to a movie. Every time when you listen to that, you usually listen you know, only to the ones that you really like, right? The, the movies that you really like. It gives you a different perspective of what is happening in a movie that you don't see as just an audience, just an obs a careful observer. When you listen to the directors, the, the producers talking about what is happening behind the scene, you get a much deeper understanding of all the things that go on in that, in that context. And so we have developed a conceptual uh, framework as well as a technology that we call video ethnography. And uh, the, the, the word ethnography means uh, refers to people, ethno refers to people, graphy is a record of the people. And so when we are talking about video ethnography, we are talking about using different perspectives of authentic videos. Authentic is very important to us to study complex human uh, phenomena. And so I'm going to show you several different cases. One is uh, on teacher training, uh, and another one is also uh, teacher training, but it's in China. And we will be showing you uh, one that is uh, for medical training in Mongolia, and also uh, the training of general doctors in, in Brazil. And then I'll go back to a, uh, a teacher training again. In this case, um, uh, the, the users can actually see the same video that we have seen earlier uh, when we were talking about teacher education. But they are not only saw, seeing this video, they have many different ways to see this video. Because at the bottom, of each one of these uh, videos, there's a commentary that talks about what's happening in this video. We have both the audio commentary as well as the text commentary about what is happening in this scenario. And we try to get as a, a, div a diversity of people that is talking about what's happening there as possible. So we have the teacher who is in the video talking about what she has done, why she has done that. We also have um, uh, some content experts, some people from universities, sometimes parents, students, are talking about what is happening in that situation. And we also look at this situation from many different um, uh, areas, and, and like in this particular case, is about balanced literacy, and so we look at it from many different ways. And we use this technology in um, different places. We, we use it for training teachers, in uh, the US, but as, uh, also in China. So in this case, for example, um, we use it to train teachers in, in Beijing area. We work with Beijing Normal University, which is the top teacher education uh, uh, institution. Uh, we also work with the Chinese Ministry of Education to develop these cases. So we have some of the best 
uh, teaching that's going on in, that, um, in, in those videos. But we also have a lot of different people talking about what is happening in that video too. We even try to you know, bring in an American educator to talk about you know, from his perspective what is happening in that case. So in, in these situations, the people who are learning how to be teachers become much more sophisticated in their understanding of these scenarios. And so we also try to use uh, this same technology, same, same idea um, to, to use uh, to, for, for, teach, uh, for training doctors. So this one is for um, uh, the medical schools in Mongolia. And um, this particular, particular case is in, on OG, uh, OBGYN. And so um, at this point, I'm going to show you a video about a woman giving birth. No, I'm just kidding. I won't show you that. <laughs> OK. Um, I'll, I'll show you a, a cuter one. OK. But in this training case, we also try to do the same thing. We show the whole process. It is, these are authentic videos of the whole, whole process of giving birth again, okay. Um, and, and, and we didn't shoot it you know, in North America where the, the, the hospitals are much nicer, fancier. We shoot in, in the best practices, the authentic videos in, in the country. And we give the different perspective. We have the Mongolian medical uh, the professors talking about what's happening in that video. We also have some um, North American experts um, uh, talking about what's uh, happening in, in that video and so that they can be complementary to each other. And so the people who are learning how to be doctors can, um, can fully see it from different perspective. Now, that is not to say that, okay, the medical students no longer need to go to the operation room to observe. No, no, we are not saying that. But I mean, in Merchant, uh, when, when I went over there, there, there was a, a class of uh, medical students. There were about 50 to 100 of them. Imagine getting all of them to the operating room, you know, that it's just impossible. But giving them some training using videos like that, get them, give them the eyes to see. So when they do get the opportunity to go into the operating room um, and, and, and observe, they have this eyes to see, to, to, uh, they are much more prepared to see what is happening in that case. So again, we use the same concept uh, to, um, uh, uh, in Brazil in uh, uh, training uh, 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 general doctors. And um, this video I won't show you because it actually will show the face of the, uh, the, the, uh, the patients, okay? And uh, these are psychiatrists, uh, uh, doctors. And um, so uh, over there we were working with one of the best um, medical school in uh, South America, the Catholic University in Porto Alegre, and um, uh, we, we, we help uh, uh, develop these training materials so that they can use uh, to train the general practitioners who are actually the ones who, who give most of the, uh, the medical treatments uh, to, to the people, to the patients who have uh, psychi uh, psychiatric needs. Uh, but oftentimes they, they do not have the, 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 all the training that, that, that is required in that situation. So we try to uh, use this to provide uh, uh, the, the, the extra training that they need. Okay, now up to this point, these all sound great. However, we have one technical problem, is that for each one of these cases that we have developed, we require a, a, a programmer. Um, we need someone who, who, who really understanding, like one of the technologies that we have used is called Lingo. Lingo in Micromedia. Uh, director and, and nobody else you know, nowadays know, know about this, this technology, very few people. And later we use some uh, later scripting technology and still most of the educators, most of the people, content experts who are trying to do training, they don't understand you know, how to do that. So a few months ago, what we have uh, done is that we are very fortunate to work with a local company in developing a um, technology that can actually enable the uh, users to put in all the different videos, different tags, different graphics into an interface, and then it will turn around and create this video ethnography case for them. So in this particular case that we have developed for Brigham Young University uh, and, and the McKay School of Education, is about family involvement. We want to train teachers, schools, 
and, and parents how to get pa uh, uh, the families involved and the importance of it and the techniques in doing that. And so we go out and film the different cases. And we also have different school, community, and expert uh, uh, leaders talking about what is happening and how to do that. And in this whole process, we do not need a programmer. Okay, we actually just get, we, we, we have the tools developed and so that the different experts, different school people, they can get the videos, the graphics, the text, and input into this system and then generate a training program for us just like this. So we are very excited about this possibility because now it allows us to create a lot more of this type of uh, tit titles and, and they will let us um, create the contents that we need to show the different perspectives uh, of, the, of different content areas. And so hopefully we can help more people to develop the wisdom they need in those areas. So what we are trying to do perhaps is similar to what um, uh, Shinjiro Fukuda uh, tried to do in his artwork, his sculpture called Angkor. When you look at this piece of artwork, you, you look at it you, you, from this angle, you, you couldn't quite figure out what it is about. But if you turn to the side, then this picture emerge. You, can, you, you know that, okay, this is actually a fedora sitting on a chair. And if you walk around and go back to the other side, you can actually see that in the same sculpture, another picture emerge. And so truth, knowledge, wisdom, there are many angles to it. The more perspectives that you can use to look at the same content, the more you learn and grow. And that's how wisdom can be developed. Thank you very much.